So now we are going to prove a couple of basic results about quadratic reciprocity. So if p is any odd prime, the product of two quadratic residues is again a quadratic residue. A quadratic residue times a non-quadratic residue is a non-quadratic residue. And the product of two non-quadratic residues is a quadratic residue. So let's go ahead and prove this. So for the first one, Let's let A and B both be quadratic residues. Then exists xy such that A is congruent to x squared and B is congruent to y squared mod P. Therefore, AB is congruent to xy squared. And so therefore, AB is a quadratic residue by definition. <clears throat> okay, the second one we're going to prove by contradiction. So let A be a quadratic residue, B a non-quadratic residue, and assume for the sake of contradiction, AB is a quadratic residue. So since A is a quadratic residue and AB is a quadratic residue, there exists XY such that A congruent to X squared, AB congruent to Y squared. Now let's substitute this into this. So BX squared is congruent to Y squared mod P. And now <clears throat> we can multiply, well let's go ahead and say this, so if we multiply both sides by x inverse we can we can make b congruent to a square and then b would be a quadratic residue and we get our contradiction. So what we need to do is show that x inverse exists and for that to be true we need the GCD of x and p to be 1. So p is a prime so basically, we must have that p does not divide x. But this is clear because p does not divide a because x is non-zero due to this thing. a divides the difference if a and x squared. So this is, in fact, given by that equation. Therefore, bx squared x to the minus 2 is congruent to y squared x to the minus 2 mod p. And so b is congruent to x inverse y quantity squared. And this contradicts that b is a non-residue. That completes the proof of the second case. Now let's prove that a non-residue times a non-residue is a quadratic residue. So <clears throat> this argument is going to be a little bit different than the previous two. So let's let a be a non-residue. And recall that if we take all the numbers between 1 and p minus 1 and multiply them by any number, we get the same list back but perhaps in a different order. And that those, are, those lists are congruent mod p. And we also know that from a previous result that one half of these are quadratic residues and the other half are non-residues. And from part two, we proved that a quadratic residue times a non-quadratic residue is a non-quadratic residue. So A is a non-quadratic residue. So over here, these two statements hold as well because these lists are congruent. And so what we have is a non-quadratic quadratic residue times a quadratic residue equals a non-quadratic residue for one half of these terms by part two. And the fact that exactly Half of these are quadratic residues and half of these are non-quadratic residues. And so therefore, <clears throat> there is 
there. Well, let me say this: the the other half must be quadratic residues. Therefore, a non-quadratic residue times a non-quadratic residue equals a quadratic residue. Now complete the proof.